Carabo is the One Piece. Sorry, that was a script error. What I meant to say was, Carabo is in One Piece as a character, a very important character, mind you. In fact, aside from Monkey D. Sun God himself, Carabo may very well be the most integral figure in the series. What, you don't believe me? Well, in less than 10 minutes time, you will. Because Carabo entered the series with the goal to become a straw hat, Carabo then traveled with the crew throughout the last 13 years, and as a result, Carabo now knows the exact location of seven Vegapunks, two ancient weapons, and one true Luffy dream. At this point, Carabo knows more about this world than we do. He's a very slow burn character that Etra Oda has been very patiently building up since 2010. Oh, and actually, speaking of 2010, if you're not aware, there's a very common belief amongst fans that Oda saves big reveals and plot points for landmark chapters. For example, in chapter 100, that is when we set sail into the Grand Line. Then in chapter 300, we had the Skypiea party, which revealed the Sun God silhouette. Another example is chapter chapter 500, where we saw the introduction of Silver's Rayleigh, and so on and so forth. The hundreds they tend to be pretty big stuff. And chapter 600 was no exception, because this is the chapter where wet-haired Carabo is formally introduced. Now I'll admit, at the time it was a bit disappointing for this crowning moment of the landmark chapter to be, to be that. Carabo. But alas, we were young and foolish. We had no idea just what kind of swampy, swampy goodness we were in for. And one heavily underrated Carabo fun fact is that he is worth a stunning 210 million berries, a bounty higher than any straw hat at the time of his introduction, aside from Luffy. But also, Carabo is a member of his own worst generation. He's part of the third worst generation, to be precise, because here's how it goes. The pre-worst generation was the Cavendish era. They were bad, but not quite bad enough, which is why the second worst generation in involving Luffy's contemporaries were made the big bad dude guys, and Carabo's generation comes after them, which also includes his brother Corabo, Gashed Albion, and Lip Service Doty. All of which were colossal disappointments, except for Carabo, who was still admittedly an aesthetic disappointment. I mean, I get it. The initial impression of Carabo isn't so great, considering that he is a questionably tongued mass murderer, whose devil fruit quite literally turns him into a runny pile of fecal matter. So I don't think it's controversial to say that Carabo wasn't designed to be conventionally popular, which I think is further emphasized by his appearance in the One Piece Water Battle live show, proving once and for all that some characters just shouldn't be turned into live action. Although even the anime tends to adapt Karibo a little bit weirdly, because just look at how massive his head is. It's like he's about to eat that poor, poor Marine. But against all odds, there are some people who have had the future sight to see Karibo's full potential. I personally know a Karibo super fan, and you know what, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of this video is very much dedicated to her. I've never actually admitted it in a video. I've never talked about it. I love Caribou so much. Caribou is obviously Luffy's best friend. I love lumpy, ugly blob. And I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of always wanted Caribou to become Nakama. That is a beautiful take. And look, some of you are no doubt going to think that that was a less than beautiful take. However, before you pass judgment, consider this. Every straw hat has a dream or a goal to achieve and Caribou is no different. In fact, his goal is far more relevant than most because it was quite literally to join the Straw Hat crew on Sabadi. He saw fake Luffy's ads and Karibo was all like, oh, mate, Nakama me the crap up. Granted, Karibo's deeper plan was to join the crew and kill murder them from the inside for reasons that we're getting close to discovering but not quite aware of yet. But it doesn't matter because Karibo is a villain who wanted to join the Straw Hats. And do you know how many villains have wanted to join the crew? It's this many. And do you know how many of them have actually become crew members? That's right. It's this many. The first of which was Nika Robin, who femme fataled her way aboard the ship, requesting Nakama membership, and the second of which is Karabo himself. So I'm gonna blow your mind now, because Karabo is already a straw hat. When the fake crew were exposed, Karabo decided to grab his dream by the Sabos and immediately go after the real crew. And the outcome of this maneuver is best described as barrel justice, but with this, he inadvertently traveled with the crew to Fishman Island before reuniting with his non-consensual crewmates on Wano and even joining them for our current egghead adventure. Karabo has legitimately spent more time with the crew than Vivi did, and Wano is especially important, because it was here that Karabo formally requested a spot aboard the Thousand Sunny, saying, and I quote, I've realized the errors of my ways. I'm a changed man. I know I can help you out. I'm your underling now, boss. To which Luffy made this face, to which Karabo countered with this face, which was enough to convince Luffy to let Karabo aboard the ship, with his official role being barrel filler. I mean, there are so many empty 
barrels aboard the ship. What, what are we gonna fill them with? We gotta put something in them. Otherwise, why do we even have the barrels? And I get that it's a very first world pirate problem, but it is still a problem and one that needed solving. But the majesty of Caribou goes far beyond that because in addition to filling space, he is also directly responsible for the defeat of an emperor of the sea. Without Karibo, Kaido would have won the raid on Onigashima. That is an objective fact because when Luffy got knocked off the island, who was there to save him? Well, firstly, the heart pirates who did most of the heavy lifting when it came to the saving, but afterwards, Karibo gave Luffy one month's worth of food, powering him back up to max meat man and allowing Luffy to strike down Kaido once and maybe for all. Luffy literally could not move before Karibo fed him. Without Karibo, there is no gear fifth, there is no victory, there is nothing but decades of enslavement until a state of death has been achieved. But also we should not underestimate the act of feeding when it comes to Luffy, because this is one of, if not the greatest thing that someone can do for Luffy. Cast your minds back to Rebecca on Dressrosa, who tried to kill Luffy, but he still fought for her anyway because there was some lunch involved. Meanwhile on Wano, Tama's single bowl of rice was Luffy's primary driving force to beat Kaido. And let's not forget the entirety of Whole Cake Island, which was essentially Luffy on a quest to recover his own personal chef, with Luffy stating that he could not become the Pirate King without Sanji. And so we should never underestimate just how important food is to Luffy. So Karibo did his captain a big favor there with the following commentary. My swamp swamp power is bottomless. She's a hungry gal. <laughs> Bit of a weird personification of swamp happening there. But hey, we have recently learned that devil fruits do potentially have wills of their own. So maybe Karibo swamp really is just a very misunderstood and very hungry gal. However, we should also talk about dreams. Even though Luffy himself has refused to talk about them for a quarter of a century. But when our captain did finally reveal his dream in chapter 1060, this was a symbolic moment in the series. It was a sign that this is now the end game of One Piece and that this is the final crew makeup that will see Luffy through to his dream. Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Brooke, Jinbei, and of course, our dear sweet barrel boy. How wild is it that Karibo was literally there when Luffy revealed his true dream? And I accept that he may not have been able to hear it perfectly because there was a line earlier about Karibo not being able to hear what was happening clearly. But if you look at the manga panels, Karibo is a mere Luffy length away from Luffy when his dream is stated. He's right there, like, like right there. And considering Frankie heard Luffy's dream and he was like a gazillion measurement units away, I think there's a pretty good chance that Karibo at least heard something. He may not have heard everything perfectly, but this swamp man knows something. And that's symbolic of his role as Schrodinger's Nakama. Karibo is in a state where he both exists as a crew member and also as a not that. Just instead of a cat in a box, we have a swamp in a barrel. And so I affectionately refer to him as Swamp Nakama. Also, this video is sponsored by Swamp Nakama because Swamp Nakama is now available as a shirt at storeglr.com. Now look, we all know that Swamp Nakama doesn't get the recognition he deserves, which is why I think it's exceptionally important that we all proudly and publicly support Swamp Nakama by plastering him on our chests. But if this is simply too cool for your own personal swamp school, then Store GLR has many other options, including Dog Flamingo, Cat Akuri, Plant Justice, and the glorious Grand Fleet Insignia. All premium quality shirts made with this stupidly comfortable tri-blend fabric. And look, I, I cannot tell you how many companies I had to go through to make sure that these were actually good. I genuinely love these shirts. Shirts as seen on Murphy Napier, and I mean that quite literally. You can see the shirt on her. And doesn't she look simply beyond comfortable? In fact, upon receiving her her shirts, Murphy even sent me a lovely thank you message. Now look, I'm not saying that I started an entire e-commerce project just to troll a single person on the internet, but I'm also not not saying that. The design and in fact, all of the designs were made by one of my wonderful channel artists. And after you receive your shirt, make sure to take a photo of yourself and at me on Twitter for a chance to be featured in a Grand Line review video. I'm serious, I will put you in a video. As long as the picture is safe for work, I should add. If it's not, then it just goes into the private collection. These shirts ship worldwide and they ship quickly. So head over to storeglr.com and show your support for Swamp Nakama today. But now it's back to more generalized Swamp. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, Karibo does become a straw hat at least in the eyes of the public. I mean, the only reason why he isn't considered one already is because Karibo always joins the crew for very isolated arcs. Fishman Island had no world government presence, Wano was an isolated nation, and Egghead Island is a top secret science facility. If the world government knew just how involved Karibo was in these arcs, then he would be considered just as much of a 
crew member as Soga King was. I mean, consider it from their perspective. Karabo was spotted on Sabadi Archipelago with the clear public intention to join the Straw Hats. Karabo was then sighted with the Straw Hats on Fishman Island, Wano, and Egghead Island. So you put two and two together and what you get is Swamp Nakama. Karabo wanted to join, Karabo is now with them, therefore he did join. So Karabo is something of a secret Straw Hat. Secret to even the Straw Hats themselves. Although narratively, he exists to serve a very nefarious purpose. And this is what legitimately makes him a character of critical importance, because he knows everything. On Fishman Island, Karabo overheard the conversation between Robin and Neptune, discovering that Shirahoshi is Poseidon. Then on Wano, the exact same thing but different happened when he overheard the location of Pluton. And now Karabo has the exact locations of two ancient weapons. Remembering that Shiki was confident that having even one ancient weapon would be enough to take over the world. A sentiment shared by Crocodile with his big Pluton plans, which he abbreviates as Big PP for short. And Karabo has twice that knowledge. He is already the most dangerous person in this world. If he were to discover where Uranus is, then that would be like Thanos collecting all of the infinity stones. It's just like, snap, it's all swamp. Everything is swamp now. Or more accurately, it would be the person who Karabo is secretly working for. Because Swamp Nakama himself doesn't have the power to make use of the ancient weapons. However, others do. Others like your crocodiles and your blackbeards. And that's not even the full scope of what Karabo knows. Now that he's on Egghead Island, Karabo has theoretical access to the greatest store of knowledge on the planet. He could learn about devil fruits, he could learn about the void century, and perhaps even learn the location of Uranus as well. Karabo is our series poet, a man who is always present for major developments. Best depicted here between Luffy and Kid. This panel is the perfect metaphor for Karabo's existence, which I would describe as he is also there. At all times, Karabo is also there. Although to be fair, this monster trio is now worth a whopping collective 6 billion and 210 million berries. So that's quite the force. Regardless of how we feel about Karabo though, it's also important to note Echiro Oda's feelings because the author obviously views Karabo as an integral element of One Piece. That's why Karabo was given a 46 page cover story. By far the largest cover story for a single character that took over a year to publish in full, chronicling his epic journey from Fishman Island all the way to Wano. Oda drew this in painstaking detail. It really did not need to be as long as it was, or did it? Because another lingering Karabo thread this set up was his resemblance to the revolutionary Gaburu. In fact, to the people of the island that Karabo ended up on, he's a hero because he led them to victory and destroyed Kaido's factory. When the big final war thing does finally happen, there is every chance that Karabo will be leading an entire force of his own. By which I mean these revolutionary dudes who see him as their savior. And so Karabo becomes a Vegapunk-like nexus point in the series. Swamp Nakama himself is never going to be a major force for good, nor is he going to be the one that personally enacts great evil. But right now, he is a flashpoint just waiting to happen. The moment his collective knowledge is disseminated into all of the wrong ears is the moment when this world will instantly change for the worse. But does the journey of Karabo end there? I personally don't think so. Because Swamp Nakama is exactly that. He is our secret and mostly shameful crew member who joined with the purpose to destroy the Straw Hats. However, his journey so far has been the exact opposite. And if Karabo does exist as some sort of anti-Straw Hat, then it stands to reason that his dream won't come true. And in fact, in a bit of a perverse swampy twist, he will become an integral element in making Luffy the Pirate King.